Okay, on to the connections and uh, how the, the receiver works. Okay, so basically, let me zoom in here. Uh, well, actually, let me talk about the power connections. Unlike other receivers, again, you have a dedicated power connection. Now, as I said, I was going to go to Dean's because all my LiPos are Dean's anyway. Uh, your choice. You can keep these connectors. Again, there's nothing wrong with them. They work great. All right. So you have a dedicated input. Now, you're not going to put a switch between here. I'll explain the switch in a minute, but there's no reason to put a switch between here, okay? Uh, basically, you're going to plug this directly into your 2S LiPo. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how the power system works. So you know the first connection, which is this lower connection right here, okay, it says switch, is your switch. Now how this works is this is a normally open to power on. So with nothing plugged in the switch, if you notice, and I plug in my LiPo, the unit powers up. You see that? Okay, if I short the two outer pins, which is what the, this switch does, as you see, it's connected to the two outer pins. If I short the two outer pins, it powers the unit off. So let me plug in here, and again, uh, if I flip this switch, which actually shorts those two pins, it turns the unit off. This is called a soft switch. It is not interrupting your power supply. You do not have to worry about the amperage load of your switch. The current is not passing through here. It's a soft switch, okay? So that's pretty cool. If your switch fails, the unit stays on, okay? So this is the one way to power the system, all right? And this is supplied with the kit. It's just a switch. This is the way I went on my helicopters because I like this. However, one thing I do want to tell you, since it is a soft switch, and in order for it to work, the processor and electronics inside uh, still is drawing a teeny tiny little bit of power. So even with the switch off, long term what you want to do is unplug your LiPo, okay? So that way you don't have a very slow leakage that if your heli's sitting for a long time could uh, kill your LiPo. So when you're done flying, go ahead and unplug, all right? Anyway, so that's one way to switch it on. The next way to switch it on is they supply this extension, and I'm going to go ahead and plug that in now. And as you see, the extension is not a switch. If I plug in my LiPo, the unit powers up. See that? Okay, but what they do provide you is this little pigtail. What this does is this acts as a switch and has another feature to it. So if I plug this in right now to the cable, it turns the unit off. So there's a, there's, if you notice these two outer wires are tied together on this pin, it shorts the two pins, as I said, turns the unit off. But another beauty of this is it's kind of like a fail-safe switch. When you're ready to fly, you pull it off. There's no way that you're going to power your receiver off unless, of course, somehow your wires got shorted uh, to the frame or something. The other neat thing is, once this plugged in and turns off, you can actually charge your LiPo through this connector. It will feed through and charge the, the uh, LiPo. So that's a pretty cool. So you got two ways to do this. You can use this approach to power on, power off, and charge your LiPo, or you can use the switch. I decided, since i got to unplug my LiPo anyway, when I'm sitting or need to, ch or whatever, I went. I'm, I decided to go ahead with the switch. So those are the power connections. All right, let's get into the regular connections, and now I'm going to zoom in. So what do we have here? Let me get in. Not too, so I'm f out of focus. Okay, so here's what we've got. Everything that is bracketed here is regulated to 5.2 volts. So as you see, you have a throttle line out that's 5.2 volts. You have a gear line out that's 5.2 volts, a rudder line out, and an aux 2 line out. Okay, I'll discuss a little bit more with the rev limiter in a minute about you know uh, which can be used when. These other ones here are non-regulated. Whatever your input voltage is, is going to be your output voltage to your devices. Okay, so remember that. If you have a throttle or a governor that can handle 8 volts, then yeah, you can use that. There's your aileron elevator. Those are for your cyclic servos that I was just uh, in the intro I was talking about that can run at 8 volts. Okay, you also have a gear out that you can also use and an aux 1, which is your usually your pitch servo on a heli, and again, 8 volt servo. So there you go. Those are the connections. All right, there's two more connections on the bottom. This one that's called Sense, this is where the rev limiter sensor connects. And then the bottom one is your bind connection and or you can put on uh, one of the data loggers uh, in there. Okay. On this side, you've got inputs for remote receivers. You have to have one 
at a minimum, or you're not gonna, it's not gonna work, and then you have another connection for a second remote receiver if you so choose. The unit comes with one, okay? So, and by the way, this can be plugged into either one. Uh, on my T-Rex 700, when I put the strap across here to miss this hump, I went ahead and moved it to the second one so that the strap didn't interfere with the uh, connection. Anyway, so those are the connections. Again, 5.2 vet regulated, straight, whatever your input is, straight out, 8 volt system. That's what you'll go with. Okay, so let's talk about some LEDs. As you saw, there's a blue LED that shows you the units powered up. And then uh, over here, you have an act and a sense. Okay, the activate is, this is all rev, rev limiter stuff, okay? So with the rev limiter, activate means that your throttle stick is above 20%, whatever, to where the, the rev limiter is now going to actually operate the throttle servo. The red LED is your sense LED. When you get the sensor hooked up, and you'll see when I do this, uh, I'll show you how to test the sensor. This will go on and off based on rotating your motor and when the sensor picks up the crank journal. Okay, so that's what that LED is for. All right, so those are the connections and LEDs, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come right back. I'm gonna talk a little bit about gear and the rev limiter and your radio. So we'll be right back with that. Okay, a little bit about the connections uh, and how you would use them, because this receiver is a little different, and depending on your radio, it could be a little different, and I'll explain. On a DX7, if you turn on the gyro menu, that is assigned to the gear channel, all right? On an X9303, the JRX9303, the, what's assigned to the gear channel is the gov menu, or you can just have it gear, which is on the gear switch, okay? And on the X9303, the gyro menu gets assigned to AUX2, okay? So you cannot assign the gyro menu to gear on X9303, and on AUX2, the, the uh, gyro menu can assign there, but not the gov menu. DX7 radio is different. Again, the DX7, if you're going to use a gyro menu, it uses gear. But we can't do that anymore, and let me explain. Internally, this receiver uses the gear channel for the value on which to have the rev limiter control the motor RPM or its maximum RPM. Okay, so what does that mean? It means for you DX7 guys, you cannot use gear, either travel adjust or the gyro menu on a DX7 if you're going to use the rev limiter because the rev limiter is basically using that channel. In fact, if you're using the rev limiter, you can't use gear channel for anything else because you're going to have values set for your uh, RPMs for the motor, and therefore, you know, you can't use that signal out to drive anything else and expect uh, anything different than what the values are you're using for your uh, revolution uh, um, values. Okay? So you guys that are coming to this receiver from a DX7, you're going to have to move your gain for your gyro to aux 2. Okay? You're going to have to. All right? There's no other way. All right. For the X9303 guys, which uh, this is, seems to be more in tuned with, uh, you'll, put, you'll set your governor menu up, and I'll show you that when I go to set up the sensor. You'll set up your governor menu, and it'll use that gear channel. And then you'll go in, and if you want to use the gyro menu, uh, usually I don't like to use the gyro menu on a Futaba servo because the gain values, you know, to get 32 on this, it's 74 in heading hold. It's 74 around there in the gyro menu so you gotta do a little bit of wacky math in your head I found that using travel adjust is a little more accurate it's about 10 higher than the value so for instance if I wanted 32 on this I'd be around 42 on the travel adjust no big deal I just prefer to use travel adjust for my gain setting but if you want to use the gyro menu on the X9303 feel free it can only be assigned to aux 2 anyway so there you go you have it you DX7 guys you know you're gonna have to um, you're going to have to uh, use travel adjust because you can't assign the gyro menu to aux 2. Okay? Hope that is clear. So realize the gear channel with the rev limiter is dedicated to the rev limiter if you're going to use it. If you're not going to use it, no big deal. All right? So there we have it. Those are the connections. And that kind of summarizes that. In my next video, I'll go into um, uh, um, setting up and calibrating the rev limiter and then I may have another video talking about how to actually use it out in the field.